Hello everyone, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the presentation. The title of our presentation is English to French Neural Machine Translation using Transformer. The project is supervised by Anna Zita Alim Rasul sir. And here I am Mohamed Shawn Rahman. I am starting the presentations. Rest of the puzzle will be continued by my Abstract. Neural Machine Translation is a type of deep learning model that can be used to translate between languages. Sequence to sequence model like Transformer are particularly effective at this task because they are attention to speed up training in this project a transformer model was used to create an english to french language translator this model can also be applied to languages that can be used to create a translator chatbot introduction neural machine translation is a newer approach to machine translation that involves training a single network to translate between languages most models can use a encoder decoder structure but this can have difficulty handling long sentences and extensions to encoder decoder model has been proposed that adaptivity chooses a subset of encoded vectors while decoding improving translation performance producing plausible alignments this this approach has been particularly effective with longer sentences has achieved performance comparable to or close to conventional phrase systems english to french translation literature review researchers have been various uh, used have been various approaches and techniques including sequence to sequence recurrent neural networks with long term memory cells and the transformer models to analyze language translations using machine learning a single deep learning model can be used jointly to learn from multiple task domains using multimodal architecture shared parameters computational blocks from different domains Primary concept in this project we will use BART algorithm concepts of RNN and LSTM neural networks. RNN. A recurrent neural network is a type of network where output from previous step is fed into the car input as a current step. It's allowing to remember the use information from previous inputs in current task. RNN have a memory in the form of hidden states that remembers information about a sequences. LSTM. A long short term memory is a special kind of recurrent neural network that is able to learn long term dependencies in data using a combination of four, four layers interacting with each other through input and output and forget gates. A cell state that allows to selective learning, unlearning and retention of information without alteration through linear interactions. But bidirectional encoder representations from transformers but is a state of art language processing model developed by google research in 2018 that uses transformer architecture with self attention on the encoder side and attention on the decoder side to achieve high accuracy on a variety of nlp and nlu task and is available in two sizes but base but large with different number of layers hidden inputs and attention heads in the encoder step data set the wmt uh, data set was used for english to french translation Included various parallel corpora totaling 850 million words with a combined size of 348 million words. The test set for evaluation consisted of uh, 3,003 3, phrases not found in the training set. The model trained on shortlisted uh, 30,000 most frequent terms in lang each language with all terms assigned to a unique token. There was no additional special. Hello everyone, this is Saib Ahmed and I am going to explain the coding part of our project. At first, we have to install the data sets and sentence piece for our project. That's why we use pip install transformers data set and sentence piece. Then we have to load our data uh, and we loaded our data uh, from load data set. Using the load data set from the data sets. And here you can see that we have more than uh, 200,000 uh, data and it has uh, two features one is ID and another one is translation and this is a very large amount of data that's why we are taking only 50% of the data because we don't have that much computational power and for uh, the 50 percent of data is being stored into a small variable and after that we split our data into training data and test data by using train test split and 
here we can see that the training data in the training data set we have almost 78,000 data and in the test data set we have almost 26,000 of data and if we explore uh, a training data we can see that uh, the first data uh, training data and its id is this and its uh, translation have uh, two more uh, uh, two more dictionaries and here we can see that the first sentence is in english and the second sentence is in french and we, after that we select uh, the uh, our checkpoint and that's why we imported the auto tokenizer and select this checkpoint into our checkpoint variable and then we explored another data um, uh, from the training data and here we can see the english sentence of that particular data is this and the French translation is this. After that we have to tokenize our data and we use that tokenizer function and tokenizing the English sentence we can see that uh, particular uh, English sentence uh, the tokenized from is this we have input IDs and attention mass Similarly, we have to tokenize the target sentence, but we in here we have to select a dot as target tokenizer function because this is our target sentence, not the input sentence, and our target sentence is in French. And after that, uh, after tokenizing the target uh, sentence, we can see that that particular target uh, sentence have output. Uh, uh, that have the input IDs and the attention mask. And to cross check our uh, tokens, we have to convert them uh, into IDs. And if we convert them into IDs, we can see that that particular input IDs uh, have this, uh, these values. Here we can see that uh, French words that was in that particular French sentence. So uh, uh, after that, we can explore our data set a little bit more by visualizing them. If we visualize, uh, plot a histogram over here, and we can see that most of our data, uh, most of the sentences uh, have words of, um, on 1, 100 to 200, not more than that. Similarly, if we visualize the uh, test data as well, we can see that uh, the most of the sentences have words of 100 to 100 to 200. And that's why, while creating our tokenizer function, uh, we uh, selected the maximum input length is 256 and uh, maximum target length is 256 as well. And this is our uh, customs uh, tokenizer function. And <clears throat> after that, we used uh, the map function to tokenize our data set and we removed the unnecessary column columns and after tokenizing our data we can view our data uh, because we have stored it into tokenized data set and if we visit that tokenized data set we can see that our data set uh, training data set now have these features and the features are input IDs attention mask and labels and number of rows are these similarly we can uh, say uh, we can see the similar things for the test data set as well And then we create a sequence to sequence transformers model. And for that, we have imported auto model for sequence to sequence LM. And we instantiate the model. And we, from here, we uh, loaded uh, it uh, from the checkpoint. And we have saved our checkpoint before. 
and after that we have to use a data collector and we need that data collector for padding and converting the, our data set into uh, pie chart tensors and this is the data collector and we are converting our whole data into uh, as well as the padding and you can see that uh, by selecting the labels over here and if we uh, try see take the type of our uh, patch labels and we can see that its class is for tensor okay and next we have to use some uh, metric score to evaluate our a model and that's why we have selected two metric score one is view score and another one is BART score and that's why we have to install it and for blue score we have to install a sacre blue and for BART score we have to install BART score metric after installing those metric we have to understand a little bit more about these two metric and that's why we have loaded these two metric and after that if we check the blue score of these two particular sentences where the prediction sentence is i love cats and the reference sentence is the similar i love cats and we can see that the blue score is 100 because we are given we have given same uh, same sentence over here the prediction sentence and the reference sentence is similar that's why uh, it is 100% and similar thing we can do for bart score as well but uh, uh, the blue score has uh, it has a disadvantage the blue score works on n grams and it is not good for detecting similar words or the word with same meaning. So if we give our predictions as I love cats and the references as I like cats, it, uh, the blue score cannot uh, detect the similarities between uh, the word love and like. And if we check the answer here, we can see that the blue score cannot detect uh, cannot detect the uh, uh, similar types of words and that's why the, it gave it uh, a low score it is 35 but in the above we have used the bart bart metric score and the bart metric score can be uh, able to understand the similar types of type of words that's why it gave it uh, almost 0.98 uh, yeah, percent of F1 score, 0.98 F1 score. And after understanding that, we created our own uh, computer compute metric function. Uh, we have uh, we took uh, both the blue score and BART score metric functions. And after that, we have to create the training arguments for our model. And here we have created our training arguments, but we have uh, selected evaluation strategy is equals to no here because our uh, model, uh, we have a very large data set and evaluation time is very expensive. That's why uh, we selected the evaluation strategy is no. We will manually evaluate our model before training and after training. And we have selected the FP16 is equals to true to reduce the computational power, uh, computational time. Then we have created our trainer and for that we have imported sequence to sequence trainer from the transformers model. And here we have select uh, instantiated our trainer. And before starting our training, we have to evaluate our model. Uh, remember that this is a pre-trained uh, model. Uh, we are using some pre-trained models. And that's why this model shouldn't be that bad before uh, the training. And after 
after evaluating the model, before training, the evaluation score is here. We can see that uh, before training, the blue score was 39.4 and the BART score was 0 0.859. Then we started our training by using trainer.train and this will take quite a lot of time. After, the, uh, after when the training gets complete, uh, we started the, our evaluation again and then we get uh, the DV score is 51.23 and evaluation party score is 0 0.89. After that, we saved our model and then we loaded the saved model using the transformers pipeline. And after that, uh, when we put uh, an English sentence in the loaded model, we can see that it can translate, it can be translated into French quite well. And that's all from my part. Thank you very much and hello everyone i'm shah sufyan nur mehdi now i am presenting the methodology part the project trains a machine translation model using the BERT algorithm to translate between the english and french languages the model is trained and evaluated using the hugging face api and the auto model sec for sec to sec lm class and various training approaches and data sets are compared. The project also includes the use of transformer, RNN and LSTM models and it involves evaluating the performance of the model using BLUE and BERT scores. Data processing and model training and evolution steps are outlined and the model is tested with a function that takes in a string of text and outputs a translated version. Here we can see the re result part. So this is our table which is showing the actual result. Like it's before training and it's after training. It's showing the scores. And the last one is our code which is showing the actual translation like for is translate English to French language so this is our final part conclusion in this project we present the use of neural machine translation specifically the encoder decoder approach for language translation the encoder decoder framework processes the input sentence into fixed length vectors that are used to decode a translation. Google Neural Machine Translation is mentioned as a system that uses a large dataset and an end to end design to improve translation fluency and accuracy. The concept of zero shot translation is introduced as a direct translation process. The proposed model in this research uses two models, the RNN encoder decoder and RNN search. So here is our references. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you everyone.